Hello everyone, I am back. Time for another video and I'm so excited about today's video. Like this is like, I'm in my element. Um, okay, so today we're talking about journaling. We're gonna have a whole like video all about journaling and kind of my experience with journaling um, and how I've grown and how I journal today. Um, so I'm actually going to sniff some oils real quick before I get started. This one is Northern Lights Black Spruce. It's a very grounding spiritual oil and I have it here. I just finished doing a video in my oily community about how I use oils in the tub. And so this is kind of like refreshing me for this new video, getting me grounded and aligned. Okay. So let's talk journaling and this, um, I think you guys have probably heard me refer to this journal as my morning mindset journal or morning mindset pages. You can check out my Instagram hashtag morning mindset pages and see, um, more of my journaling practice. You can follow me at hello blank page. So at hello blank page. And I have a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, journaling and reading and just all kinds of um, quotes and fun type stuff there. Okay, so my history with journaling, I've been journaling since I was a kid, but my journaling has definitely shifted as I've gotten older. And I um, give a lot of the credit to my shift in journaling to Julia Cameron from The Artist Way. I did not go through the Artist Way program until a couple years ago, but I heard about her morning pages practice and started my own morning pages practice when I was, oh my gosh, it's probably been, it's been over 10 years now. And if you're not familiar with morning pages by Julia Cameron, the the purpose behind them is to start your day, you know, you wake up, you go to the page and you do three pages of longhand um, journaling and you don't edit yourself. You don't, it's literally, you just dump. So I guess, I mean, it's kind of like a brain dump. You just dump out everything that you're holding that morning onto the paper and um, three pages. So I started doing that. And that really shifted my journaling practice. It got me out of the typical, you know, this is what I'm doing every day, you know, like what I'm experiencing and writing about that to, you know, when you have to write three pages, you get creative. And so that, that was kind of the next step in journaling for me. But then I hit this point where I just didn't like, I, I felt like something was missing in my journaling practice when I was doing morning pages. And what I realized was that journaling should not have rules. And so that's, that's what I want to kind of focus on today. Before I show you how I journal, I want to say, give yourself permission to erase any rules that you might have put on yourself about journaling, whether that be three pages, whether that be you have to write every day, like whether that be art journaling, you know, you feel like you have to create something or you have to write poetry in there. Or it has to sound good. Um, so like just take all the rules out because journaling does not have rules. There are no rules to journaling. You can be someone who keeps a calendar. Okay. You keep a planner. That's a journal. So journaling legitimately like there are no rules to journaling. Um, so that's where I'm going to start before I share what my journaling has kind of evolved into. The second thing that I feel like is very important when you're journaling is to know why. Because you can go on YouTube and you can search journal flip and you're going to find so many different videos with different journals. So I encourage everyone to do some soul searching, do some journaling, answer the question, why do you journal or why do you feel pulled 
to journaling and see what comes up. So for me personally, um, I journal for clarity and I journal for healing. Those are my, the two main reasons that I journal. Some people journal to keep track of their memories or they journal because they want to leave a legacy behind for their children, a legacy of, you know, the memories that they made and describing them. Um, I don't journal for that reason. So my journals are not going to be full of what I did that day. I mean, sometimes I talk about that, but not a whole lot. Like a, a lot of my journaling is wrestling. It's wrestling with something, whether it be, um, I was actually just talking to my friend this morning about a journal um, topic that came up, which was limiting beliefs. I realized I was still holding so many limiting beliefs about myself and journaling through that, which was literally just a list. I made a list of all my limiting beliefs, like the lies that my head continues to play. And then I took those limiting beliefs and I turned them into truths. So I, I turned them into an affirmation that, that was true rather than a lie. So figure out your why, and that's going to be a hint to how you are going to journal or how you not should because there are no rules but um, depending on your reason why your journal is gonna look different if your if your why is to record your memories your journal is gonna look completely different than mine because mine is not for that reason mine is for clarity and healing so my morning mindset pages the reason I call them morning mindset pages is because I feel like it's a combination of waking up and just getting out everything that's in my head, which is very morning pages like, but then the mindset part, I always end my journal, no matter if it's, I'm taking notes on a podcast or, um, a gratitude list or, you know, no matter what I'm doing in my journal, cause it's not always just writing. Sometimes it's taking notes. Um, but I always end it with truth statements. I always end it with something for my day that is positive that I'm either looking forward to or just something I need or something, you know, sometimes I'll end with a wish for the day, but it's something that shifts my mindset from getting out all the gunk and venting. Cause a lot of times since I am journaling for clarity and healing, there's a lot of stuff that I just dump onto the page. So there's a lot of venting and I don't want to leave it there. I don't want to leave my journal entry or my journal time with a struggle. I want to end it with a positive mindset shift. So sometimes that's with gratitude. You know, I end it with all that I'm looking forward to that day or what I'm excited about, or um, a truth that, that I figured out about myself. So those are things I really want you to think about, even in my, in hearing about how I journal and my morning mindset pages, um, ask yourself why, you know, ask yourself why. I do, and I, I will be having a flip through, this is my winter journal. You can see I use a composition notebook and sometimes I color in the front. Sometimes I um, add stickers to it. But this, this actually came from Mandy Stewart at her Secret Message Society. I believe her website is secretmessagesociety.com. I loved it. It fit for this season of my life. And it says, this is my revolution. So I put it on the cover. I do label them. I label my journals with um, the year and my word for the year. So this is 2018. My hashtag is remembering I am because my word for the year is I am. And then this is volume one. This is my winter volume. So I will be doing a winter um, journal flip through probably in March, I'm thinking. Um, I still have a good bit. I have, I have about that much left. So probably the end of February, beginning of March. Um, so even though I journal for clarity and healing, I do like sticking in little pieces from my day. The reason I do that is simply because it makes me happy. 
and it brings me back to that specific moment in time. So even though I don't write my memories down, that's kind of how I do my memory keeping in my morning mindset pages. So as an example, um, I got a card from a friend and so I, I put that in here. This, I had a meeting with a woman from um, a bar downtown Raleigh and we are collaborating on some holistic things. So I just put her card in there. Yesterday, okay, here you go, perfect example. Yesterday, I went to a bookstore with my girls because we are having a little Cupid is Stupid Valentine party for them and all their teenage friends. And one of the things that we're doing is a blind book date. So each girl will get to go home with a, a blind book um, where they choose a book based on different things that I've got on the outside. And um, that'll be their little Valentine date. Well, one of my things on my list this year is to read my own blind book. And um, I also had on my list to read a Stephen King novel. So I picked up, this was what was on my blind book. It was a little Harry Potter goofy picture and um, a pepper. And so I, I put that on here because that was something that day that meant something to me. I actually, I opened it and it was Water for Elephants. Not read that, so that was exciting. And then I put my Target 20% off sticker on here because I found a Stephen King book at Target. So I was like, hey, that's two things I can cross off my list. Um, so that was, that was something in my day that I just, for whatever reason, wanted to document. So didn't talk about it a whole lot. Like I did put here two 101 in 1001 days things in process. And I wrote down the blind book date and Stephen King. So like I do have just little bits of memory, but um, for the most part, it's just clarity and it's stuff like this. Okay. This is me asking why and just chasing my priorities, chasing my five-year dreams and why I have those, um, chasing what motivates me. So it's a mind map. So like every journal is different. And I think that as much as I love seeing what other people do, I think it's great for inspiration, but just remember just remember that your journal is going to look different than anyone else because there's no rules. So you do what feels right for you. If like, if journaling like this, just straight journaling doesn't feel good to you, do bullet points, do bullet points of everything that's in your head, all your ideas. If you know, you just have a bunch in your head and you can't get out what it is, do a mind map, write down, you know, thoughts right now, and then start listing them and figure out how they connect. Um, you can do whatever you want to do in your journal. If you want to do add watercolor, like me, I love, I love watercolor pages. That's like my favorite art to do. Um, so I add watercolor and then I love the stickers. This was a favorite cider that I tried um, January 26th. And so I wanted to remember the name of the cider. So I tore the label off and stuck it in my journal. Um, yeah, so you can do whatever. I'll add little bookmark. See, I've got a little tab right here that um, marks a, a vision, a vision for my life. So like seriously. So basically what I'm wanting to leave you guys with is journaling should not have rules. And so even though my process is to vent and clear out my head and chase all the white rabbits, cause that's, that's basically what I do is I start with one thing that's in my head and then I explore that. I go chasing all the white rabbits but then I come back to center with a truth statement. I come back to center with something positive to focus on for that day. That's my morning mindset pages. Do yours have to be named that? No. Does your journal have to look anything like that? No. You have permission 
to journal intuitively, to do what feels good for you. Do you have to do watercolored marks on your pages? No, no. Um, and I tell people when I, I lead some journaling workshops, I tell them, I'm like, make it your own, do what feels right. Ask the question, why? Why do you want to journal? Why do you feel pulled to journaling? And then chase that white rabbit. So I hope you guys have a great Tuesday and a great rest of the week, and I will see you next week.